Today we're going to do some design on 2.4 GHz Cantennas, or some people might know it as the Pringles Cantenna. Unfortunately, this term is incorrect. It's really not called a Cantenna, it's just a cute term some geeks thought of. It's actually called a waveguide. The reason it's called a waveguide is because when you have a can, when you have a tube, even coax for that matter, because electrically it is a conduit for, for RF signals, that radio signal is going to actually bounce up and down inside of this actual tube, this metal tube, and reflect up and down until it finally gets to a driven element, some kind of receiving or transceiving element. Now, here is my Bluetooth waveguide. It is one sexy bitch. Some of you have, may have seen this already on my Picasa page. This is a 3.5 inch diameter metal can at, I think, 7.5 or 8 inches long. Uh, so about, about 9 inches long. And I haven't used any coax connectors. I directly soldered a piece of coax right into the can. Uh, that's something that I want to cover today. Uh, before we even get into building, designing. How to select the right can. You can't just take any can out of the trash and use it. Just like we've, I've previously explained, your radio frequency, radio frequency is directly correlated with your actual active antenna. Which means, if you change the length and diameter of this can, you change the frequency in which it can receive. Ideally, you want something between 3 and 3.75 inches. Some people use smaller, some people use larger diameters. This is a 4 inch can. The actual cutoff frequency to this is about 1.8 gigahertz, if I remember correctly. It doesn't go into 2.4. There are mathematical calculations that you can that you can use to determine if a diameter can and a length of a can will work for your frequency. Um, I have heard people use using these cans quite often, and they work well. So I've opted out to use one of these. I've also noticed that standard soup cans are very good. They're actually the perfect diameter for 2.4 gigahertz, but one single can is not long enough. The longer your can, the longer your tube, the longer your waveguide, the more directional it's going to be. In some cases that's very good, in some cases that's bad, so it's up to you to decide. Now, this is a standard soup can. Now, it's not long enough. It needs to be up to 9 inches long or longer. So. At one point, I actually cut the bottom off of one of the cans, and I tried to weld them together in absolute horrific failure, which is why you see a whole bunch of disgusting burn marks on this can. I haven't found a very good or reliable way of actually soldering these two cans together. Um, aluminum tape would work, but it's really not much of a permanent solution. It can be broken easily. You could always just take some, some band iron, which is just a piece of uh, malleable metal, like an erector set piece that has holes in the side. You put, it up, put a strip like so, and you put some rivets, and then you do another one here, you do another one here, and you just put it around so they stay together. Be creative. Uh, use a lot of the information that I've given you already on creating other stuff. Look around your house and see what you can put together. As for selecting the right can, you got to make sure that you have the right diameter, and you got to do all the calculations. If you're absolutely mathematically inept, go to the show notes. On the forums, I will put links to 2.4 gigahertz waveguide calculators, or just Google the term. There are a bunch of people that created... Java applets that will allow you to punch in the values, the diameter of your can, and your frequency, and it'll tell you how long you need it to be and where you need to place your driven element. When you're selecting a can, try to get something that doesn't have too many ridges in it. If you notice, this has, has ridges. It's really not a bad thing, but it can actually have a slight effect on your signal propagation. Reason being is, when that radio wave enters the can, it's going to bounce up and down, up and down, up and down. These ridges might actually affect the frequency. Small ridges, like on these, aren't too big of a deal. Ideally, you want to get something that's absolutely smooth. It's really hard to find a can that is absolutely smooth with no ridges in it at a 3.5 inch diameter at about 8, 9, 10 inches long. There's a lot to building this, so that's what we're going to focus on today, building. So, you've done the math, and you've got a couple of cans that you want to experiment with. How are you going to attach your can to your driven element, to your car. And this is where some of the creativity for today is going to come in. Let's go to the table side, and I'm going to start to put this together and explain some of the ways of how to directly solder in your card to your can. Alright, some of the typical components for any electronics project. Soldering iron, right here. Solder. Basic tools. I got some wire cutters around somewhere. I got some wire cutters. Got some surgical tools, but needle nose pliers and such will work just fine. You've selected your can, you've done your math, you've done your measurements, and you've punctured your, your hole for your driven element. How are you going to attach that driven element is 
really it's up to you. There's a couple of ways. Primarily, people will use these, these panel mount end connectors. We've seen them before on the show. They work just fine. Um, you'll just have to go ahead and punch all the appropriate holes and attach it. Then you take some copper wire. You cut the appropriate length. In this case, I need 31 millimeters, which I've marked clearly on my wire, 31 millimeters. You would jam it in the hole, and you would solder it in, and compensate and cut, and make sure you got everything the appropriate length, and you're good to go. But things aren't always as what they seem. I'm not going to really show you how to go and punch holes in a can and mount this. You really should be able to do that on your own. The only thing I will suggest is, if you are going to go and get a panel mount connector, when you do drill the holes in the can, drill them slightly smaller so they actually have something to grip into. If you drill them too, too small, or sorry, if you drill them too big, it's really hard to reach your hand inside of here with a pair of pliers to use nuts and bolts to try to fix everything. Also, when you're attaching anything to the can, make sure they do not protrude too far inside of the can itself because that could affect your actual reception. Not by much, but still. You want to try to have this, the inside of this can as smooth as possible. With all these ripples in the can, it's already hard to do as it is. Today I'm actually going to go and make a Bluetooth cantana or a Bluetooth waveguide for Mustang. We remember this little Bluetooth guy. This was, I think, from episode 19. I have some coax on here. I believe this was pulled out of a laptop. I don't know the name of the coax, but I do know it's used for laptop Wi-Fi cards for the internal antennas. I think it's LRX or LMX or something like that. I'm not sure. If anyone knows the name, please put it on the forums and let us know. Um, if you don't have this coax cable or access to it, and you actually took our recommendations, this is a Linksys WUSB 54G uh, Wi-Fi card, which is, I believe, Athros chipset based, or a, a Raylink chipset based, and it actually has an antenna already that has a length of coax. So you don't even have to do anything. You just got to desolder this, and you can use this. You don't have much to work with, so make sure you don't fuck up. So you have this coax, how are you going to get it attached to the can? How are you going to get shield attached to the can, but in the meantime, isolate the driven element? Well, there's one of two things you can do. Also, I, I forgot to mention, if I haven't mentioned it already, if you have LMR195, that will also work for this project. You just have to go and adjust accordingly. What I would suggest doing is you get yourself some kind of metal pipe. This is copper pipe used for ice makers for your refrigerator. This is actually called water feed line. This actually fits quite nicely over LMR-195 like so, if you can see. So what you can do is you pre-tin the inside of the, co uh, of the coax shield, you solder your driven element onto this, and when you put this through, this pipe is going to act as a shield. Anything being exposed from outside of this pipe is your driven element. That is going to be soldered to the top of the can. Now, I don't plan on using LMR 195, that's, that's a little bit big for this little USB card. I've got this thin coax. So what I've done is, I've got a thinner piece of pipe. This was obtained from an old antenna, but if you have some old pens, the ink cartridges are also solderable metal. The thing is, if they're shiny and chrome, the chances are you can't solder to it. So go and take uh, a nail file or some sandpaper or even an, uh, some kind of abrasive wheel on a rotary tool and try to get a nice copper coat around the side of it. I've already gone ahead and pre-tinned this. I went to my can and I pre-tinned that. Now, I pre-tinned it by method of a little butane lighter. I just went ahead and I, I lit it up and I put it to the can like so. Wait until I got really nice and hot and I gently fed in some solder. Just like that. And, I mean, it's, it takes a bit of practice and it's really hard for me to do this on, on camera. But, point being is, you get the area hot with a butane, this is a campfire lighter you can use. You could use a soldering gun or even a, a low power butane pen torch, whatever you got laying around. 35 watt soldering iron, chances being it's not really going to work too well for this application. So you've drilled your hole slightly larger than your actual pipe. Now I'm actually going to be using this little bugger right here and that's going to, that's already pre-tinned and that's going to fit in just like so. 
you don't want it to protrude too far into the can. I'll try to... Right here I've got some, some magic hands and I've got some hard drive magnets attached to it. That way my can won't go anywhere. Because if you're actually going to be uh, using a butane lighter on this in the method that I'm using, well, it's going to get hot and anyone that's holding it isn't going to want to hold it for too long. So I'll try to get a nice shot inside. Notice how it's not protruding. It's not really sticking too far into the can. So now it's just a matter of getting this to stay in. So I'm going to try to use my soldering iron. I would highly recommend using some kind of locking pliers themselves. That way you have something that'll, that'll lock onto it and keep you from having to go and grab a scorching hot piece of metal. Now I'm going to try to use a 35 watt soldering iron for this, but I really don't think it's going to work. Or it's going to work really well and I'm going to have to eat shit. And it seems to be working really well. I just can't see what I'm doing. 